When we take a moment to gaze up at the inconceivably distant stars scattered across the spiraling backdrop of our Milky Way galaxy, like a weary-eyed traveler returning from a distant voyage, we reveal a deep feeling of insignificance in comparison to the endless nature of the universe. To this day, there is no greater method to remind us of the mundane trivialities of everyday life than glancing up at the ghosts of many millions of ancient stars dangling in front of the black veil of the great cosmic dark. But for me, it's not just the immensity of space that gives me my dose of insignificance, but time. Deep time. Naturally, we tend to ponder time lengths that are proportional to what we observe in our own experience. Days, weeks, and years. So the concept of deep time, winding back through many millions and billions of years, is far beyond the comprehension of you or I. We humans evolved to survive in the open savannas of East Africa, to fashion stone tools and follow the herds for survival, all while developing the brain power to outcompete and outsmart the great predators which shared our environment, not contemplate the successive eons that have passed before us. Our ability to ponder our place in time is but a harmless byproduct of our ancestral survival instincts. No nomad or wanderer of ages past could have possibly known of the forgotten worlds of planet Earth lost not in space, but in time. So here's a simple question. When was the first person born? Around what time in history did the very first recognizably modern Homo sapiens walk the Earth? 50,000 years ago? 100,000 years ago? 1 million? Well, truly, there is no real answer, because there was never a first person. In order to understand the history of life from an evolutionary perspective, it's important to realize that terms like species are often relative and ever-changing, because nature doesn't have to serve our intuitions. Evolution is a slow process, where in times of environmental change, every generation is slightly different from the last. Transitions between species aren't nearly so sudden. It's not unlike the so-called fall of the Roman Empire. In this case, too, we tend to think of transitions from one historical period of time to another as a sudden collapse, an event of some kind, wherein one day the classical age was humming along as usual, and then suddenly, the barbarian hordes attack, the walls fall, the emperor is deposed, and the people are killed, enslaved, and scattered along with their civilization, lost forever to the dust of time. But in reality, if you or I were to live at the same time of this so-called fall, we would hardly notice much of a change over the span of our lifetime. Just a subtle policy shift here and there, a slight change in cultural emphasis arises, some new gods pop up while certain old ones slip further away into obscurity, while essential portions of infrastructure are no longer properly repaired and maintained, until eventually, over the span of decades and centuries, things slowly evolve into something totally different. From classical antiquity to the world of medieval Europe, from a time of symmetry, unity and order, literacy and light, to a time of superstition, division and darkness, such is the passage of time, whether on the microcosmic scale of the passing of human civilizations, or on the larger, deeper scale of the transition from one species to the next. Just imagine. We animals, plants, fellow humans, entire ecosystems alike, are all perpetually living together in the flowing stream of evolution. We are all collectively floating downstream together in a mashup of currents, tides, and whirlpools, all affected and being affected together by the same selective variables in our collective environment. Just as the common Romans living at the time of their own civilization's fall could not have noticed the changes swirling all around them, and just as historians are loath to pick a singular date or time to pinpoint exactly the moment of monumental change to the world, evolution is a slow process, so slow and gradual, even when it is punctuated by dramatic change, that it is never noticeable or significant in any way at one point. It is only through the application of deep time, of looking over vast periods of cause, effect, and change, that anything significant pops up or jumps out at us. Based off of the fossil evidence, we can tentatively pin the origin of anatomically modern humans in Africa to between one and two hundred thousand years ago. 
The world we currently find ourselves in, with all of its wonderful and vibrant life forms all playing their own role in a vast global ecosystem, is but a snapshot in time. A single frame in the great film of life, where all that is inevitable is change. Natural pressures from competition for the basic necessities for life force populations to either adapt to new environmental changes or be forever lost in extinction. In its multi-billion year-long history, life on Earth has seen countless environmental changes, many harmless, some catastrophic, where species have either vanished or developed new adaptations to cope. The further back we wind through geologic time, the more alien life becomes. As recently as 10,000 years ago, lions were stalking herds of giant wild camels on the plains of North America, alongside of woolly mammoths and nomads. The streams were filled with saber-toothed salmon measuring 2.7 meters, and just a few thousand years before, a sheet of ice a mile thick covered the continent. 10 million years ago, animals show much fewer resemblances to their modern-day counterparts. While there are whales, beavers, bears, and cats, there are equally as many unfamiliar creatures. There were great predators, such as the Antelodons and the Nimvirids, preying upon three-toed horses and giant sloths. Life 150 million years ago paints a very different picture. This world, one ruled by giants, is set in the middle of the Age of Dinosaurs. Here we find a menagerie of great reptilian beasts, like the colossal sauropods and the spectacular stegosaurus. Dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus and Triceratops lived at the very end of the Age of Dinosaurs, some 66 million years ago, 85 million years after the last stegosaurus vanished from the Earth. More time separates Stegosaurus from Tyrannosaurus than Tyrannosaurus and us. 500 million years ago, the land is barren, desolate, void of life. But in the seas, however, lies an alien world. The competition for survival had begun long ago, and the competitive pressures have already produced life forms just as beautiful as they are bizarre. Many of these creatures we will never know existed, their soft bodies too fragile, their existence too obscure for their remains to last through the ages. All while life has been competing in the endless war of nature, the continents have been rearranging themselves even more slowly than evolution. Collisions and tears have reshaped the Earth's surface countless times. Given millions and even billions of years, nothing is static. Change happens, oceans rise and fall, mountains form and degrade, species evolve and die off. All in all, in deep time, all that is certain is change. Eventually, even we humans will become extinct and be forgotten forever. When? Nobody can say. How? No one is sure. But what we do while we are here is up to us. You know you make me wanna Don't kick my heels up